We are here in Bathurst, then it is round eight of the W Series Esports League. New South Wales, Bathurst is very well known for its GT cars with the Bathurst 12 hour and V8 supercars, but today we bring in the W Series. But I can't do this on my own. My name is Actual Vision, but I'm joined by Billy Munger. How you doing, mate? I'm really excited for this one. It's going to be some good racing. Bathurst, I've never had any experience of driving it in real life before, but only on the sim. And I can tell you now, I crashed a lot of times. It is action packed. Yeah, it's one of those circuits where it's kind of just keep your nose clean, see where you are with a couple of laps to go and then gun it, give everything you can. Uh, it's just such a tough natured circuit. Uh, we don't see open wheel cars here very often, but we do get that treat today. And while some of the first times are indeed coming in, we did see a 205.8 in practice from Vissa, and she is the quickest as it stands. And a 206.4, Marty then second with 1.1 second off the pace. There we go, Caitlin Wood, four tenths of a second off the pace now in second spot. Uh, but it is Vissa. Vissa is still the quickest week in week out. I said she might be a bit of an underdog here today. And she's proven me wrong already, Billy. Yeah, I mean, that's a great banker lap to get in. And I think we've seen that in a lot of the qualifying sessions so far, that if you get that first lap sort of within half a second of what we see the quickest time in practice, then it just allows you to push on the last couple of laps and you, you're not so worried about making a mistake and, and running wide. So she's definitely got a nice little margin in, uh, to play with there. Yeah, if there's ever a circuit to get a banker time in that's close to your PB, this is the place. Uh, you can really push the limits of this circuit around the mountain section that we are just heading onto now uh, with Bell and Garcia. And the closer you can get to those walls, the more lap time you will find. But ultimately, it's high risk, high reward. Uh, so again, the importance of that banker lap is huge. Uh, Bell and Garcia then currently seventh position as we watch it come over the mountain section as you come down in towards the cutting and indeed the dipper. Uh, we'll see the dipper in a minute, which is a very scary corner. You completely lose all sense of... Uh, a sense of feeling with the car here. There we go. Drop down. You've just got to hope that the car sticks uh, and the aerodynamics does it work, does its work. And Ben and Garcia, they're successfully negotiating it. Um, it's all good doing it in qualifying, but in the race, you've just got to be a bit more careful because you might. And uh, very rarely, but <laughs> judging by these drivers over the last few weeks, Billy, we might see some side by side action through that section of the course. Yeah, I mean, if we see some side by side action from there, I can't imagine it being clean. As much as these drivers have got a lot of respect for each other. Uh, it's just so narrow and like you say, there's so many moments down, coming down that hill section that the car goes light and it's so hard to, to sort of balance the throttle and control the, like the bleed off on the braking uh, and manage that well, especially with a car next to you. So as much as we want to see side by side action, we also want everyone to try and finish. And I think if you might see some people get a bit brave and uh, that could cost them points and sort of re they may retire on a circuit like this. Yeah, this is the calm before the storm, Billy, isn't it? We're a bit reserved right now. The excited Luke and Billy will indeed reunite, I'm sure, today. It's going to be... I'm so, so excited. I've been waiting for this since the uh, the track list was announced, well, many moons ago now, was it? A couple of months ago, just over. Uh, Marta Garcia, up onto the front row then. Two and a half tenths of a second off of the pace of Vissa. Uh, I believe they've all got one more opportunity here with three minutes left of qualifying and well Marta, pretty good again off the line. Very, very important that you get into the lead of this race as soon as you can, Billy. Yeah, it really is. I mean, leading through the first lap, I think that gives whoever is in the lead a massive opportunity to open a gap up. Um, following through that sort of section again with a lack of downforce on such a narrow circuit where the walls are either side of you, um, I think for a confidence, having clear track and being able to pick your breaking points and stuff like that on the first lap is going to be worth a huge amount of lap time, I would have thought. And we can see our Martha Garcia there. Wow, that was uh, the car control to, to keep that one out of the wall. That was impressive stuff. Yeah, that may have been more luck than judgment there. The rear definitely did step out. Uh, but if you want to maximise your lap time, of course, with only one more attempt here, it's kind of, if you've been it into the wall, at least you've given everything. So you can see Marta really is on the limit right now then as we head right over the top of the mountain. We're on a peak right now as we now go towards our descent. And wow, this is looking a pretty good lap time here. Again, as close to the walls as possible. Maximising that lap time through the dipper they come. Wow, down in towards the final part of the mountain section. And it's a long run down that Conrod straight down in towards the chase. We won't see Bradley Walsh today here, but you know the chase is a very, very technical uh, corner. You've got to make sure you do indeed hit the apex. And well, Marta Garcia there making, uh, making a bit of an error there, Billy. And well, we say about high risk, high reward. You don't want to be doing that in a race. Yeah, I mean, she's. Uh, I think that just proves that this is banker lap, how important that was, because you could see there she's making mistakes the whole way through that lap, really pushing the limit. She was obviously, she knows who she's fighting in the championship. And she wants that pole position. She hasn't had that in the last few races. And she's had to do the hard work when it comes to the race. And wow, 
Visser again, another three temps improvement. She's now half a second quicker than anyone. So when it comes to qualifying, she really is showing her dominance. Yeah, she really is. Uh, we've seen a couple of moves and shakes there. Looks like Sidakova may have grabbed a couple of spots there at the death hit in qualification. Visser, though, by the looks of things, is golden for pole position. Unless someone like Neri Amati looks like she started her qualifying a little bit later than everybody else. We've still got one minute left in this session, so every reason to suggest that she might be able to find that extra bit of time. Currently sat in P5 as it stands. She'd love to be on the front two rows here. We'd need to find about one and a half tenths of a second to indeed overturn the deficit to Agron. But P5 then for the Spaniard, of course, Neri Amati, looking to add to some incredible performances over this eSports series. Uh, not quite really being consistent as, you know, her other fellow Spaniard, Marta Garcia. Uh, and I did say, again, Marta Garcia was probably the quickest over the course of the championship at this point. You know, the last couple of rounds, she's got the most points. But Vissa, she's come out the gates here, absolutely flying. But it's all about that start. She's not been nailing the starts as uh, consistent, consistently as Marta Garcia. And well, can she get to that first corner can she get to hell in the lead yeah it's quite interesting here watching on board with neria marty just seeing the differences in the driving techniques between her and when we were on board with marta garcia you can just see how for me i've just recognized instantly that marty they're a bit sort of uneager to open the steering up using a bit more steering angle in general than marta garcia and i think that's where you have to have confidence in the car around a circuit like this to be able to use less steering and be confident that the rear is going to stick and you're going to have enough front end grip to, to get you down to the apex of the It is Bicycle Visser then and indeed Marta Garcia that are P1 and P2. We're heading towards the race now as they all do indeed grid up. And well, can Visser get the start that she needs? I'll tell you what she has. And Caitlin Wood's got a bit of a fly here in P3 as they head then in towards turn number one. And well, first job of the day done here then for Visser. She takes pole and she takes the lead into lap number one. But a bit of a mistake there on the exit and they're going to go side by side again here, Billy. And well, is this going to end in tears? Almost a bit of contact. There is contact in the background there. That didn't look too good. And well, as Visser got an absolute flyer off the start line, the second phase after turn number one, it is Marta Garcia that leads and heading up towards the mountain. Visser now trying to bite back with that, uh, indeed, slipstream up towards the mountain here. And well, it's already kicking off. Wow, Marta Garcia there. After what was quite a poor start, considering how good she has been off the line, she really did a great job in getting the exit out of turn one there. And that run up the straight, she managed to get the move done and really aggressive with her defence on Visser. And this is now where I think we're going to see, hopefully, uh, for Marta Garcia. She'll be hoping anyway that she starts to open up the gap through this section here. Visser, you can see here her vision slightly blurred for the apexes. She's trying to pick out her turning points and obviously just having a car in your eyesight makes it a little bit trickier. So you can see the gap's about half a second now and uh, there are long straights on this circuit. So if, you, if she can hang with Marta Garcia here, She's made a slight mistake there, and you can see now her exit's compromised. This is a real important lap here for Marta Garcia. Yeah, if Marta Garcia can indeed run away, she will be golden for at least the next lap until they go back up the mountain again for lap number two. And it's now about nine tenths of a second, so we know that the slipstream is very faint here, but it is indeed still a factor as they come along the Conrad straight for the first time. And actually, you can see Wood is very close in behind, Neri Marty as well. So, you know, we're worried about whether this can catch up to Marta Garcia, but she's now got to contend with Wood and Marty. Marty closing in by the looks of things to Wood as well as they come then down in towards the chase for the very first time in this race the lead is now one second which is marta garcia again and she can have three performances again today like she has in the last couple of weeks billy i think the championship run between the two top drivers is genuinely on yeah it really is i'm so impressed with her composure after getting a bad start at the first corner it's so easy to then sort of look in your mirrors miss your breaking point and actually get a poor exit but the fact that she managed to maximize that exit and get the job done on Vissa when she obviously knew that that was what was needed to be done to take the lead of this race and you can see now Vissa making that one mistake while following and losing the downforce through the mid sector of the lap coming down the hill how much now she's under pressure again it's the same place she got overtaken the first lap will she get overtaken again here by wood when she goes defensive there, she's going to have a compromised entrance then up the top of the hill. Actually, no, she just opens it up nicely there indeed. And Wood just has to get off the gas ever so slightly, which now uh, lends to Neri and Marty. The gap now, 1.3 seconds for Marta Garcia. But again, it's all good having a good lead at somewhere like Bathurst, uh, Billy. But you need to be concentrating the whole time. There is no room for error around a circle like this. We saw Marta Garcia actually make that huge error in qualifying where she lost pretty much the whole of the bodywork of the car. And we do not want to be seeing that in this race. Yeah, this circuit is so punishing. You've seen it so many times over the years. One lapse of judgment, one sort of lack of concentration moment and you're in the wall. 
and uh, at a circuit like this it being such a long lap that can cost you dearly and especially in a sprint race like this it's okay maybe a little bit more sort of feasible in an endurance race but definitely no mistakes from any of these drivers we can see today um, actually just looking down the leaderboard as well one that's jumped out to me is Cyril Kova who's down in 15th and Marta Garcia with the form she's been in I don't think she was really too worried about her position losing second place in the, the league standings to Cyril Kova she has been the informed driver but just seeing sort of Cyril Kova down in 15th and her leading this race it's got to give her more confidence for sure I legit think that Marta Garcia is looking forward. She's not looking backwards now. Uh, she's looking to try and catch up to Visser with, what, nine races to go, including this one. I'll tell you what, Visser is looking backwards right now because we've got Caitlin Wood very close in behind as we come up towards the end here of lap number three. It's Marta Garcia that leads them. Visser in second, one and a half seconds behind. Wood then is in third position. Marty, fourth spot then. Bell and Garcia is in fifth. Agron is in sixth. Then we've got Tomaselli in seventh. Moore in eighth position. Schiff and then Wolwend in your P9 and P10. Alice Powell then is in 11th spot. Eaton in 12th. Rodest in 13th. Cook then is in 14th position. Kim Alinen in 15th. And Pepper, well, she is in behind in 16th position, but I think Silakova has taken a quick repair here. She's a lap down, unfortunately. I think Alice Powell may be in that same position as well. But it's been a very good start by Marta Garcia. Visser under a little bit of pressure there over the course of that last lap, but she's warded it off. And, you know, what, 51-point lead here, Billy? P2 is not the worst result in the world. No, it's far from it. I mean, Visser, her dominance early on in this league has really allowed her to to not to be pretty comfortable finishing one position behind whoever her rival is in the top of the standings. And what I'm quite interested to see here is Mars Garcia, even though she opened out with that big lead on the first lap, she's not running away with it. Even with Wood pressuring Visser, their pace of the second and third uh, position drivers here, they're, they're keeping up with, with Mars Garcia here. And it's going to be interesting to see with her Visser can just open that gap out enough to stop worrying about who she's got behind her, whether she'll then be able to go on the attack and start taking the temps out of Marta Garcia's lead. Yeah, we've seen in these races, even though it's only 15 minutes, the tyre temperatures do indeed, they go through the roof. You know, the, the second phase of these races, whether it be the, you know, the first two or indeed the feature race, even more so in the feature race. And Marta Garcia would have learned from that and maybe just keeping those tyres in check is probably the best idea. And also, if you can afford to be able to take a couple of tenths off your lap time while leading a race here at Bathurst, it is, you know, huge value for that. Um, you know, it doesn't matter whether you win the race by five seconds or indeed by five hundredths of a second. Just winning the race is the most important thing. I just think we're seeing Garcia here just leaning on that experience more and more as we head on board here then with Isla Green. She's in behind Bell and Garcia. So it looks like the front six have got a big old getaway then uh, to the rest of the field. Tomaselli then seven seconds further back. More ten seconds further back there. No real battles happening in the back end of the field here. We did see a couple of incidents at the start of this race, which... It's Bathurst at the end of the day. We do uh, generally see that in any form of motorsport when it comes to Bathurst, and it's no different here with the W Series. And, well, it's not even race two yet, and we're already seeing that. Race two is going to be super interesting. But as it stands, it's still Marta Garcia that leads out here by 1.4 seconds. And I think the big factor here is that Vissa, now she's managed to gap Wood by about 1.2 seconds. She can now maybe look forward and try and attack the race leader. Yeah, I think that's what we saw earlier on, that she was looking at her mirrors. Wood was doing a really good job of pressuring her. We saw some real sort of close opportunities for Wood to make the move stick, but it is a very tricky track to overtake on. And I think that's what's going to make race two even more interesting, where even though these the girls at the front and the, the sort of the, compared to the drivers at the back, there's quite a big pace difference. I think defensive, like being able to defend around here is a lot easier because of how narrow it is. It makes the overtakes a lot trickier. And I think, to be honest, if Marta Garcia is really going to make inroads into the championship, it's got to be done in race two for her. She's got to get a strong start and stay out of trouble for one as well. Um, but I think it's going to be whoever's more composed and is really aggressive with the overtaking in, in race two and gets that job done. I think that you can actually probably see more of a point sort of gain for one of the two drivers in race two than I think we'll see in race one and race three, really. Here yeah, on board here then with Marta Garcia. If, if there's anyone we have seen show off their defensive credentials, it is Marta Garcia for me. She's been absolutely superb with the pressure being piled on from behind. And while Visser is P2 currently, 1.4 seconds behind. But we've we've seen last week at Suzuka, we saw at Brands Hatch that like Visser could produce moves out of nowhere. She almost did it as far as one to the final corner. If there's one driver on this grid that, you know, doesn't matter how good you are defensively, you do not want behind you, it's Baitska Visser. Yeah, I remember. I still remember that spa overtake. That was a, uh, or the attempted overtake. That was actually insane of how far back she was going into that braking zone. Um, I, don't I still think... don't believe it. I don't believe it happened. I, it was that ridiculous. 
there was I just don't really like that is just it was such an aggressive overtake no one was expecting it we weren't expecting it and uh maybe Vissa wasn't expecting it maybe she missed her breaking point we never really know fully if she was entirely going for the move or whether it was just sort of a look that became an attempted overtake but yeah that was a uh, that was really impressive that she didn't quite pull it off but he's going to need to bring that sort of caliber of driving to get past Marta Garcia here I think yeah, like sometimes you can't really explain some moves that some drivers pull off. I'm just going to say it was like magic or something. I don't know at this point. It was it was incredible. Uh, but again, like you said, she's going to have to pull off something really huge here if she's to overturn that deficit to Marta Garcia. Again, you know, there's opportunities here along this first straight after hell uh, up in towards the mountain. And then you've got the Conrad straight in the back, uh, down the back straight as well to make an opportunity for yourself. But, you know, if they get really close up towards the mountain, there's really no way you can make an overtake. If you do, you risk both of your races. And again, with Vissa having a 51-point advantage, I'm pretty sure she's not going to be too worried about attacking Marta Garcia at this stage. I think maybe if it continues to go the way it's been going over the last couple of weeks, if Marta Garcia can close that gap down potentially to, you know, we're looking at maybe 20 points, which I think is going to happen. I genuinely believe that's going to happen. Then you might see a bit more of an aggressive drive from uh, from Vissa. She's going to have to start beating Marta Garcia more just... You know, obviously to get more points, but more for her psychology in the, these races because she's been used to being at the front and just running away with things so, so easily. And all of a sudden, she's like, oh, what do I do? Well, I need to find answers. And Billy, you must have been in that position before where you've you know, had races where you just can't do any wrong. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you can't explain why you've not quite got the pace. So what will we go through this head right now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it is so frustrating when you come out of a qualifying session and you feel like you've done a really good job. We've just seen a little lock-up there from Bell and Garcia, so this could be interesting down the back straight here between Agron and Bell and Garcia, but sort of the mentality of a driver that thinks they've done a great job in qualifying and then sort of, I compare it to sort of a Bottas-Hamilton sort of situation in F1. No matter how good a job Bottas always does, it seems like he's always about a tenth behind Hamilton and uh, this must be getting pretty frustrated, but... You can see there Agron getting the job done on Bell and Garcia down the back straight. And that just shows you that there are errors to be made and positions to be gained. She had a slight lock up there onto the back straight and that was all that was needed to get the job done. Yeah, I'll tell you what though, it's going to be a bite back here by Bell and Garcia. Late on the brakes potentially, not quite so. And actually forced a mistake there by Agron and again just got into the mirrors. And wow, making a move up the inside through the final corner with four minutes to go here. And Bell and Garcia and Agron are having a hell of a ding dong right now then. Up towards then turn number one. And you see that Agra just gets squeezed out there by Ben and Garcia. And we're seeing more and more of that. These drivers are being a little bit more tentative over the, uh, you know, the first few weeks or the first half of this championship. But now we're seeing them squeezing them onto the entrance of the corner. So they lack momentum coming out of the corners. We're starting to see like proper, proper racing here in sim racing. A lot of these drivers wouldn't have had the experience of others uh, within sim racing. And now we're just starting to see the very, very best from them all. Ben and Garcia, she would have been furious at losing P5, but takes it back as quickly as she lost it. Yeah, it's a great job from her to get that move back. And Marty Garcia here, another second over Vissa. Vissa seems to be pretty set now on, on P2 and the points that she's going to get for that. Maybe she'll go for fastest lap as well. Um, well I'm, I'm wondering if she might have some damage here. Might be worth going on board with uh, Bytesco Vissa here. Because yeah, she's I mean, dropped she off very, well very quickly. Um, she's got some back markers to contend with. So that might be it. Well, let's just check out the front wing. That's where normally the damage is. If one of the front sides is bent up here. Um, looks No, looks okay. Looks okay. So maybe just struggling with the back markers here. I think Marta Garcia caught them on the straight going up towards the mountain. And uh, this had caught them on the mountain, which is not ideal. Uh, that's for sure. And lost, well, it's now three and a half seconds here. So Marta Garcia is going to be absolutely buzzing there in P1. Vissa, not so much. And well, did anyone manage to catch up through that phase there? Caitlin Wood, maybe? No, Caitlin Wood's losing time as well. Uh, Neri and Marty. Actually, Neri and Marty's taking advantage of this because now Caitlin Wood may be under pressure. Eight tenths of a second, four tenths, and Bell and Garcia. So the battle for P3 is on here. There we go. So we're on board then with Neri and Marty. She's currently in what would be P4. Oh, Bell and Garcia, she's made a mistake then on the exit of the mountain. She's now dropped down to 6.7 seconds. It was just about four tenths there, so I'm not too sure what has happened there. Um, but as you can see then, Neri and Marty trying to chase down Caitlin Woods. So the battle for the lead looks like it may be over here with two minutes, 20 seconds left on the clock. We may get two laps here. Not too sure. Um, it depends when Marta crossed the line. I think, yeah, we're definitely going to get two more laps here, actually. But Neri and Marty then try and chase down Caitlin Woods. So this is what it's all about then. The podium spots here. And, well, they'll obviously want to try and pick up some pieces if anyone does hit a wall. Because it is Bathurst at the end of the day. It doesn't matter how far you're in the lead. The walls, they don't take exception to that. If you hit it, that's game over. Yeah, it really is. And, I mean, we've seen some smart driving here. And this is where your sort of race experience, and like we talked about earlier, how the girls and the drivers are getting more aggressive in general. 
I think that spatial awareness of knowing how wide your car is and sort of obviously in the sim world it's, kind of, it's that's a hard thing to judge in real life let alone in sim racing to, to make that sort of clean racing that we've seen over the last few rounds I think they're, they're definitely more confident with that and we've got Alice Power here in front of Caitlin Wood and uh, this could really play into Marty's hands so you actually see Alice uh, get out of the way there but I'm not sure if Caitlin got a compromised exit I think Marty might have as well yeah it's back up to nine tenths to get now so uh it's Marty still in the race here for, for getting on the podium, but she's going to have to do a great job to sort of claw that gap down in so she can get into the toe sort of range of about six, seven temps, I reckon. Yeah, she needs a huge sector two here for sure. Great stuff there by Alice Powell, by the way. Great awareness. Uh, I think maybe Wood lost a couple of tenths there, not expecting Alice to get out of the way, but she got out of the way at the perfect opportunity, uh, which is fantastic to see. We're seeing uh, you know a lot more sportsmanship as the uh, series has gone on. Uh, but as it stands, then it is still Marta Garcia leading by 3.4 seconds. Uh, we say she's been helped out by the backmarkers to gain that time, but she indeed got the lead on lap number one. She started P2. Uh, Vissa got an absolute flyer off the line. And then through turn number one, just made a little bit of a mistake on the exit, got a little bit bogged down, and Marta Garcia has not looked back since. Uh, Caitlin Wood then, again, in P3. We're on board then with Neri Amati. Neri Amati not really able to close in. You're right, Billy. It needs to be around about seven tenths of a second to maximize the slipstream here. We'll be getting a slight tow, though, that's for sure, as they head then down in towards the chase for, I believe, might be the second to last time here. Marta Garcia, I believe, is just about to cross the line. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, well, there we go, around the final corner here. So with 11 seconds to go here, we're going to have one more lap remaining. And well, can Marta Garcia hang on? She has been the form driver over the last, I would say, four weeks now. And well, that form does not look like it's dipping whatsoever. 3.4 seconds to lead then. Uh, two bites of Visser. And again, this is the difference between the Sidokovas and the Marta Garcias. Because when Visser hasn't got race victories, she's managed to get the podium pretty much every single time when it comes to race one and race three. And there's no difference here at all. So Visser, again, maybe not going to go out and get the victory, but she's still getting huge points. Race in, race out. Yeah, she's been definitely the most consistent over the, the league so far and consistency wins you championships. Uh, it gets you points on the board and you can see from her total going into this weekend of how that consistency has got her a big margin in the championship. Uh, now Marta Garcia over the last few rounds has really been just in a league of her own when it comes to the races. I mean, I've been super impressed with the fact that She's not, it's not like she's fastest by a second every time in qualifying. She's normally actually a little bit slower than Bissa. Close, sort of within one or two temps, which is what you'd like to see. But when it comes to the races, she, she seems to switch it into another gear. She stays really composed, and I think you see that in her driving now, that she's opened this gap up. I've not seen the, mis like the mistakes we've seen in qualifying. It seems like in qualifying she's a little bit more tentative and a little bit more nervous with being right on the limit. But when it comes to driving at sort of that 95 96%, uh, every lap, putting the lap times in, which is what you need to do in a race situation. She seems to be very comfortable in that aspect. Yeah, well, as that was happening there, Billy, uh, Powell lost out to Kimmelainen. So Kimmelainen now up to P14. They're battling for the final uh, few points positions here. And I'm speaking to a few beginners in sim racing, actually, just today. And they were going, oh, I'm doing this lap time here. I'm doing that lap time there. I just spent 10 minutes on the circuit. And I just said to them, do 30 laps around the circuit. T tell me how long it took you to do that 30 laps and then do another 30 laps and see if you can take 10 seconds off your time there. It's all about consistency, which is Marta Garcia personified. She's been absolutely incredible here today. Started P2 on the grid in race number one. Did not get a flyer off the line. Vissa did, but she got the move done on lap number one and she's going to cross the line and it's another victory for the Spaniard and for Marta Garcia here in round eight of the W Series Esports League. In second spot then, it will indeed be Baitska Vissa and then third, by the looks of things, it will be, well, would it be Caitlin Wood? I think it was just about. Race number two then of round eight. We're here at Bathurst and it's Sidokova on the front row then with Redest. And then look at Kim Alinen. She's a race two specialist. She's right out the front here in P3. To see how she performs here then up towards turn number one and Sidokova has got that great start there but she's gone in there very acutely actually through turn one that's what happened to Bites Gavissa on race one but it's not going to matter because uh, Redest is not really close enough to take any advantage there it looks like we've had a relatively clean start here it's a very clean start actually from everybody as we head then up the hill oh. Tamla Pepper of course a race winner from previous rounds currently in P4 and uh, in behind there there's almost three wide coming up towards the mountain Pepper maybe looking for a little nibble up the inside not quite going to be able to there and it is a Cook Powell oh Cook's made a bit of an error there I think not too sure what's happened we can 
Uh, see a little bit of smoke in the background. But she's dropped all the way down into P17, was battling 4P5. And wow, look at this then. Pepper having a, a wow, hellacious little battle here. Redesta making a bit of a mistake. Kimmelainen maybe going to take P2. Oh, Lily, bit of contact there. Pepper, again, she can't really make a move at the inside. Kimmelainen there with a little bit of a love tap as we go over the hill. And wow, it's Tasman Pepper up into the uh, podium positions. And Sinokova, as she does quite often in race number two, she gets pole and she's able to drive away. And there's no different today. But it's the race one and race two, a uh, race three, sorry, where she keeps making mistakes as well. Talking of mistakes there, Kimmelainen taking a lot of curb there. Oh dear, that is huge. Oh, that's a huge, huge crash there. Kimmelainen was just a passenger in the car, unfortunately. And I'm not too sure who she took out. Was it Alice Powell? Oh, it was Alice Powell, I think. That was not good at all there, Billy. No, that was not ideal. I mean, we were expected to see some action on that first lap, and it just looked like Kimmelainen there got all out of shape, went on the curb, and obviously tried to keep her foot in. And uh, that caused a bit of carnage. We see some more people sort of change their position. Uh, I've noticed that Visser has actually managed to open out a few places over Marta Garcia. Actually, no, I think Woods has lost out as well because she was the one who was bridging the gap between Visser and Garcia. But now they're, they seem to be running pretty close on track together. Uh, the battle for P2 is very hot here right now. Pepper is indeed ahead then of Redest. Redest now down to P3. Woolwellen is in P4. We've got Eaton in P5. Tomaselli in sixth. Then Marty and Moore in P7 and P8. And there we go. We've got Visser, Agron, and Marta Garcia. So Marta Garcia, by the way, uh, looks like Visser may have actually gained a spot here on Agron. Marta Garcia has not been able to follow uh, follow uh, through the opposition as it stands. Marty just made an overtake there on Tomaselli by the looks of things. It's been an action packed lap number one. A couple of drivers, though, like Cook and indeed Schiff are in the pits, unfortunately. Uh, and it's not been a good day. And I think Alice Powell as well. Uh, definitely Alice Powell there. She just did like three somersaults in the air with the car. Um, and Kimmeline and not really at fault there, if we're going to be completely honest, Billy. She was she was just a passenger in the car, took too much curb at the top of the hill. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not only her race over, it was also indeed... Oh, well, we'll look at Marta Garcia's car. Look at the front wing. And that's not good. You know, she wants to follow Visser through here. Uh, she's got damage to that front wing, and that is definitely going to cost her, especially over sector number two. Yeah, that is not ideal. I mean, she was obviously trying very hard to follow Visser through. She knew that this was a race that she needed to make up the points. I mean, obviously, seen quite a lot of the drivers have obviously had some form of contact, but Marta Garcia, their front wing damage on a track like this, it's going to be very difficult for her now. And this is a real chance for Visser to sort of make those points that she lost in race one back up. And we see Abby Eaton here with Wolvend, pretty close battle for fourth. Uh, only two attempts between them. They've got to keep it clean. And I think Abby Eaton, if she can sort of keep this sort of margin, she may be looking at overtake down the back straight. Yeah, for sure. And then this is what Marta Garcia needs to start thinking about. This is probably going to catch these drivers here. And if they're battling, that's where there's potential carnage for Vissa. So Marta Garcia just needs to keep her head in check here. Just get to the finish line as quickly as she possibly can and just see what happens. It's one of those circuits. Bathurst will indeed bite back. Uh, we're on board there with Abby Eaton. Lost a bit of time there then on the exit of the mountain down the Conrod Strait we come. Uh, and as it stands then, it looks like Volvend is actually chasing down Redest as it stands. So Volvend was under a lot of pressure at the start of this lap. But at the end of this lap, she's looking very, very good to maybe make a podium move. Uh, but it is Sirok over the leads in 3.8 seconds. Pepper was in a hell of a battle with Redest at the start of this race. Uh, and Kimmelainen. But she's now made herself 3.9 second advantage over third, which is great stuff here. We're on board then with Bites Gavissa trying to make yet another overtake here on Tomaselli. Tomaselli's got a bent wing as well. And Vissa, well, very easily makes that move stick there. And you can see that Visser has got a spotless car, which is absolutely ideal for her right now. And she is going to try and chase down absolutely everybody. Currently in P7. Next up then for her is Neri and Marty. And it's actually 6.2 seconds up the road. So a couple of laps here where, at the very least, I would say, where she's got a bit of clear air to work with. Um, we're on board then with Abby Eaton. Eaton looks like she may have closed back up here. Um, so Neri and Marty... Uh, Eaton, yeah, Eaton P5, and then we've got Volvend in P4, and Redest then is in P3. So they've all closed up here, uh, but again, it's what they do over the mountain. That is the key section of this circuit here. Keep it clean, and again, like they say in poker, a chip in a chair, and you've got an opportunity. And oh no, Redest makes a mistake there, and Eaton gets completely cleaned out. And that is not ideal. Woolwen then is going to be given, uh, well, gifted an opportunity here of a potential podium. Marty now next up in P4, Redest in P5 as it stands, and Visser now is closing up. So I said she might have a couple of laps and might take to catch up to the uh, rest of the field, but it's not quite working out here because of that big, big bit of carnage. 
Yeah, that's really played into Vissa's hands because the higher she climbs up the leaderboard, the more the points that she gains from each position will be. And she's up to in the, into the top five now. She's passed Ardest, Rodesta and uh, Marta Garcia, who was with Vissa after the first lap. You can see how much that damage is really costing her. She's now about four seconds behind Vissa after just a couple of laps running with that damage. So after controlling the first race, a bit of front wing damage, and it's playing into Vissa's hands massively here. Yeah, uh, well, they've all been given a freebie there because Rodesta, I think, had a big, big... Well, she did have a big accident, we saw it. Uh, but she's now, indeed, dropping down a third. I think she's taken the option for a fast repair. Uh, Volven, though. Fabian Volven in P3 right now. This is a huge opportunity. Uh, although she has got Vissa behind her, closing in uh, in fifth position. But there's Neri Amati there, which is a bit of a buffer. With eight minutes, 40 seconds to go. Could Volven, indeed, go out there and get P3? But as it stands, then, we're eight minutes, 30 seconds left of this race. Silakova, about 3.6 seconds. The gap between her and Pepper hasn't really increased uh, over the last couple of laps. So Pepper looking pretty strong today. Uh, then we have got Volvend in P3, Marty P4, uh, Visser then is in P5. We've got Tomaselli in P6, we've got Moore in P7, Marta Garcia then. She'll want to try and get a couple of overtakes as soon as possible here, but that damage is definitely going to affect her moving forward in this race. You can see just in front then, and we've got Moore and Tomaselli. So two potential overtakes here. The rear wing, though, of Moore's car is, well, it looks like I've sat on it, to be completely honest with you. It is a bit of a mess uh, as we head then down in towards turn number one once again. And don't worry about the rear wing here because, well, there you go. Moore is going to make the move up the inside. Tomaselli makes a mistake. And Marta Garcia with a freebie. Moore there nearly loses it on the curb. We've seen two big accidents today today due to those curbs here at Bathurst and that was nearly a third there they were all so close they would have all been caught up with it and you can see that even with the damage uh, to the front wing we've got an equally damaged car in front here of Sarah Moore and Ma well Marta Garcia is going to try and get two for the price of one then almost three wide it is going to be three wide up towards then the opening here of the mountain you can see then Marta Garcia there you go that's the difference there with the arrow the front wing there, all bent out of shape and you just can't have that much confidence with a car well I think actually all four the drivers you see in this battle have some form of damage. I mean, this is, look, you can see Sarah Moore's got front wing damage, Marta Garcia, I'm pretty sure Tomaselli did as well. So this is sort of, for Marta Garcia, she needs to be at the front of this train because you've got Visser, who's obviously going to finish in front of him unless she makes a mistake herself. Uh, you can see it's nine seconds of gap to Visser now for Sarah Moore. So in terms of the points and minimising any sort of deficit, Marta Garcia, she needs to finish sixth here and hope that Visser doesn't catch the girls in front and sort of gain any more points. If she finishes one place behind Visser with damage, but that for me is uh, it's not the end of the world when it comes to the points that she have lost. It's a really good point as well, because the difference between P1 and P2 is a big points margin, but the difference between P5 and P6 isn't so much. So she would lose points on Visser, but she gained a lot more in race number one. So a big opportunity here for Marta Garcia. And you know, we, we know that she is going to play this uh, sensibly. We know she's going to try and get it done um, relatively soon, but ultimately she's not going to put a race at risk. And as we come down the Conrad Strait, it looks like she is just about ahead here of Moore. And well, is Moore going to be able to indeed try and get back in the position? Not quite. She just tucks in there, tries to get a bit of slipstream to maybe potentially get an opportunity here around the outside of the chase. Not quite going to be able to. Uh, she held it her line there. She has held a line. And actually, to be fair, Marta Garcia has got damage to the front of the car, but Moore has it on the front and the back here. So that car must be an absolute dog to drive right now. Down and towards that final corner then. Squeezing Moore out wide there. Uh, perfect. Perfect amount of room left there. Compromised the entrance of uh, Sarah Moore. But ultimately, job done for Marta Garcia. Yeah, she really needs to focus on this exit from turn one here. If it's a good exit and she doesn't run wide, looks pretty clean to me this could be job done and that's what she needs really she needs now to o start opening this gap up in sector two over sarah moore really establish herself in sixth position you see this is only well, she's about six and a half seconds behind marty so for me that looks like that position pretty wrapped up and i think this will end up finishing fifth here but marty garcia she can't afford really to finish seventh here this has got to be a minimum of sixth position for her to sort of stay in the stay in the hunt for the championship isn't this the stuff the champions are made of though you know a little bit of adversity a little bit of damage to the car and still performing at this level you know only going to be losing minimal points to Visser as it stands Visser, although is closing in on Neri and Marty so Marty is going to feel the presence of Visser very very shortly um Pepper to be fair she's absolutely flying right now she's a p2 3.2 seconds behind I wonder if Sidokova may be struggling with tire temperatures that we did mention earlier on in the broadcast again 3.2 seconds Volvando she's looking very good here but actually I think Neri and Marty might be going quicker as well here 
she's only 1.7 seconds behind. And this is going to probably hope that Marty does indeed catch up to P3 here. They have a little bit of a ding-dong over the mountain and lose a load of time. And then she has an opportunity of closing in on that podium. And this is what this has done so well. She's been able to maximize points every single round. I think the only time she's not maximized the points was at Watkins Glen where she made that big error. But that's one chink in the armor over a 30 race season. That's ridiculous, Billy. Yeah, she has been super consistent. She's been, particularly in race two, we've seen some great drives from her. And to be fair, a circuit like this to be go from the back of, or one off the back of the grid, from 16th up to 5th, I think she'd be pretty chuffed with where she's finishing already. But as much as she's chuffed with how she, her progress has been, Marta Garcia, with damage, is still in 6th position. So it must be a bit frustrating for Visser because it seems like no matter what she does at the minute, Marta Garcia is still there or thereabouts, even if she's making mistakes. They're only small mistakes, and it's not costing her a lot of points. Um, but this is where, like you say, Visser will be really hoping that Marty, who's only actually 1.1 seconds behind Volven now, so the gap is closing. If they start battling with the pace that Visser in general has, we've seen it in qualifying her getting pole position, it could potentially be like a last lap dash for that end of the for the po podium spot. And if she got a podium Visser, that would really, for me, sort of eliminate any chance of a, a Mads Garcia comeback. I mean, even with the amount of races we've got left, you, you said it before, one chink in the armour, and I think that will get her confidence back up if she could get a podium from the back of the grid here. Yeah, it'd be a huge result, you know, that we have circuits where it favours, well, not favours, no, no circuit favours driving from the back, but there's a, a circuit we've had previously where it's a lot easier to indeed safely negotiate the pack if you are just that much quicker, which Visser has proven. Um, and this is not one of those circuits that favours that. So she could get a freebie podium here. She would absolutely love that. Marty is closing in, you're right. And uh, as much as we are discussing Visser and indeed Marty Garcia, they are the two, I would say, title protagonists right now. They are the strongest drivers in the field. We still have a race on our hands here. Sinokova, again, losing a little bit of time here, but again, maybe doing what Marta did in race number one and just managing that gap. She's such a good front runner is Sinokova. Pepper then, looking for another podium here today. She's been incredible in the second half of this season. Volven, though, I think this might be a first podium as well so a big opportunity here although Neria Marty is closing that gap hugely here so Neria Marty then seven tenths of a second behind this uh, only four and a half seconds now behind uh, Neria Marty we then got a 20 second gap then to Marta Garcia Garcia is losing around about four seconds a lap then to the drivers in front due to the damage of the car so to get a P6 with that pace deficit is absolutely huge we've got more than in p7 who just not able to keep with the pace of Marta garcia unfortunately also with a damaged car agron then 6.4 seconds behind in p8 tomaselli is in p9 and then rounding out your top 10 is belen garcia silicovado still leads by 2.9 seconds uh, you can see neria marty has caught up to the back then of volven and are we going to see a little dash here for the podium i believe we've got one more lap remaining here as it stands uh, I could be wrong. Uh, I think it's one more lap. It's going to be close. It's going to be really, really close here. But I think it's going to be the last lap. So I don't think Bias Convis is close enough. Unless, as we've seen before, there might be a little bit of contact then up over towards the start of the mountain. We are now on the uh, descent through what I'd like to call the Monaco of Australia, this part of the circuit. Uh, we then go through the left-hander here. And again, you've got to get the power nice and early, but it's so easy to over-rotate the car that, again, you lose all sense of weightlessness. Uh, but Neri Marti, she want to be this close as they do indeed come out the exit of the mountain onto the Pond Rod Strait. She's too close now, really, to make a move. There's no real margin for error around here. You do not want to be going side by side. Again, you do the jet wash of the car is de indeed going to affect your drivability. Uh, if you don't want to be hitting the curves. You do not want to be touching any of the walls. You just want to make sure that you are in a position to take full advantage on the final back straight here. So we come down in towards the dipper then. And again, just see a little bit of a mistake there by Volven, but she's doing a great job here. She'll want to hold on to this podium as best she possibly can. So look over leading by 2.9 seconds. Looks like she will get yet another victory. Tasman Pepper looking like she's going to get another podium here in second spot. It's all about who's going to get third position. Visser closed up by two seconds over the mountain section. I don't think she's going to be close enough to indeed get a third or a fourth position. Here we go then. Neria Marti. She's done the hard work over the mountain. She's just stayed close enough to give herself an opportunity down in towards the chase then for the very final time here for race number two. And she does take that podium spot here. Can Volven bite back though? Down in towards the chase then for the final time. A couple of corners to go here. Bit too much curb there for Neria Marti. Unsells the car, but indeed gets on the power early enough. And well, it's one more corner to negotiate. Sivakova will take the race victory here. It will be Tasman Pepper in second, but who will get third? You can see that Neria Marti there goes in very, very defensive here. And can Volwen get on the power early enough? Not quite going to work out. I don't think it is a bit of a drag race. Not quite close enough, but Neria Marti out of death here takes 
the final podium spot. Volvend indeed will finish in fourth spot. Visser with a great performance from the back of the grid will take P4. And Marta Garcia against all of the odds only loses one position to Visser. Here we go then. It is qualification for race number three, round number eight here at Bathurst. And of course, I can't do this on my own. I need the excitable Billy Munger. How you doing? I don't think I can be as excitable as you just were there with, with that opening line. But uh, I'm here anyway, looking forward to some good racing. Yeah, it should be good. Should be really, really good. Uh, Bicycle Vissa then in qualification. Can she get another pole position here? Of course, uh, she has not scored as many points as Marta Garcia in terms of the racing, but the fastest laps, which she seems to be able to get for free every single time. She's that good. Uh, she has now nullified that two-point advantage that Marta had, and they both scored 30 points. So it comes down to the final race today. Uh, and again, as much as Marta Garcia has probably been the strongest in this championship over the last couple of weeks, Vissa still keeps hanging in there, and she's got a huge points advantage. So lots of positives for her to take here. And well, one big positive is she's done a 206.8, and she takes provisional pole, but no. Marta Garcia then has indeed taken provisional pole off of her, and this is around about four tenths of a second off of her qualifying time in the previous session in race number one. Um, and you can see that it's about one and a half tenth advantage then from Marta Garcia. So the times aren't as quick as race number one. So there's plenty of room for these drivers to improve, Billy. Yeah, plenty. I mean, we saw a 205 actually in practice and it didn't quite get delivered in qualifying. But obviously the pressure is on in qualifying. It's three laps, obviously getting the tyres in the right window. There's lots of factors that come into it where in practice you've got a lot more time to to play around with these things and we've normally seen Visser is always the closest to her practice time when it comes to qualifying you get the odd surprise of someone who maybe delivers a slightly quicker lap than they did in practice which is always a nice surprise for us to see um Marta Garcia will she be able to get down into the 205s will Visser come back there's still plenty of this qualifying session left to go Oh, I did a bit of digging, a bit of investigating about this, Billy, because uh, we've been discussing about why they've not been quite hitting their practice times. And while there's an option in iRacing where the rubbering of the track, so of course they put more rubber down. Uh, this is me trying to teach you how to suck eggs at this point, Billy. You know all about this, but they put more rubber down in practice, um, but then it gets scrubbed. So there's an option where you can leave it so that the next session starts from where the previous session ended, but it gets scrubbed every time. So they start with basically a green track. So that's what the uh, what we've or what I did with my research. Uh, so that will be happening in the race as well. Um, so if you leave that ticked, you can indeed go from practice into qualifying, into race, and it just indeed goes to more optimal uh, track state over the course of the sessions. But that doesn't matter here. It's a green track every single time they start a session, which I think is probably a better option. I think it makes it a little bit more exciting. So very unlikely that we're going to see a 205 here because of course they've got an hour to put all that rubber down in practice. Although Bicecovissa does Bicecovissa things. Like we said, we're living in a Bicecovissa world right now and she might just about go and prove me wrong. She's done it pretty much every single week. Shows how much I know about commentary. Uh, and well, there's a 206.5. So she does take pole position. Not quite hitting her practice times here. Uh, and Marta Garcia now into second position. But Marta Garcia seems to be able to start again. This is just ridiculous, Billy. Every time I mention someone on pole position, someone else takes it. And again, it's Marta Garcia on pole position. Caitlin Wood then, qualifying specialist over this eSports series, is in third. And what is very very interesting here is how close the times are we re we always see it in race number three that everyone hooks it up gets a, a very i don't know maybe uses their experience with a circuit a few drivers who may not have put as much practice in they all start hitting absolute worldy times and as it stands right now a 206.4 is your pole position time and i believe that's very very close if not just a touch quicker than our first race qualifying yeah i think well like you mentioned with the the green circuit they've had one opportunity to drive on it with a three lap qualifying that they did in the first qualifying session for race one so now all that experience counts for for lap time and gains that you're going to see in this session i think with two laps on the board already they seem to be very close and obviously the gap that Visser had in the first qualifying was actually quite significant compared to the small margin of 800s that garcia has got now so this is a it's a tight session. They still got one more lap. It's about they've got the sort of bankers in at this point, and so now it's going to be last lap dash. We saw Marta Garcia actually have a huge off in the last lap of qualifying in the first session. So will she be able to hold it all together and maybe find even more time? That would be cool to to see a last lap dash between uh, all these front runners. But yeah, still got to do the job. Starting to sense it, Billy. You're like a boiling kettle right now. You're close. You're close. You're getting excited. You're getting more excited here on race number three. It's good to see. Again, are these drivers going to 
put on a hell of a show in race number three. Get us all excited. Make me lose my voice. I don't mind. If it's anything like Suzuka, I am on board. That's for sure. Last chance then saloon for these drivers here. We know the visit is a head-on circuit. Of course, in qualifying, they're on the circuit on their own. So no one can impede each other. Uh, but they are all, all in the same session. So Visa then, has she found any improvement here? Currently, eight hundredths of a second then away from Marta Garcia. Across the line, she will go. And she does take pole by two and a half tenths of a second. Can we go on board with Marta Garcia, though? Because we know she's behind. And there we go. So across the line there for Marta Garcia. And has she found any improvement here? Across the line. And is it going to be enough? It's not going to be enough then. So Bicycle Visa has found that extra time here at the death in qualifying. Marta Garcia twice was able to overturn the deficit. But third time as a charm for Bicycle Visa because she will take pole position. Pepper, we're on board with, is in P5 as it stands then. Uh, but it will be indeed Visa, Marta Garcia and Caitlin Wood, which has been pretty much the top three in qualifying this whole eSports series, well, especially the last sort of four or five rounds, really. Yeah, I mean, Visa there did a great last lap. We saw it actually in reverse order in the first qualifying where she put in the banker that got her pole on her first lap and then didn't really improve as the qualifying session went on. So... She's definitely changed a few things, learned from any mistakes she maybe got from maybe over pushing in the first qualifier and then to get pole position. Uh, again, by a healthy margin, two temps, but it is close. It's a long lap. We're over, over two minutes in lap time. So two temps, as much as it is a noticeable gap, that over the course of 23, 24 corners around here in Bar first, that is, a, is like a hundredth for corner, which is absolutely nothing. We'd both be doing our research today then. Me with the old... Uh lobby setup and you have the corner numbers this is good we're almost going to be professional by the end of this billy i'll tell you this is great stuff uh, but it is indeed bites gavissa who will take pole once again and marta garcia she's gonna to have to try and rely on those lightning quick starts billy is she gonna be able to do it again Here we go then, it's race number three here at Bathurst. And I'll tell you what, Vite Vista has got off the line pretty well here. First phase was good, second phase very, very good as well. But Marta Garcia is very close in behind. But I'll tell you what, Vista has done a hell of a job here. She has done what she needs to do. We've got a car going backwards there. That is definitely not the right way around this circuit uh, as we head then up in towards turn number two. Using that slipstream here then, Marta Garcia will want to do exactly what she did in race number one, but she's going to have to go the long way around and she's going to get this done. Bicycle Vista goes defensive here then. Marta Garcia has she oh no she's not she's not going to be able to quite do it here but actually Vissa makes a bit of a mistake then running a little bit wide then on the exit of turn number two up towards turn number three they are side by side here Marta Garcia going to play it clever she does she just sticks in behind then of Vissa uh, and well actually the front four are very close indeed it looks like Woods held on to P3 as it stands Neri and Marty then is in P4 Pepper is in P5 for me they are the five quickest drivers uh, across this championship, maybe uh, sprinkling with Sinopova as well, but she's down into P9 by the looks of things. So not a good start here again in race number three for Sinopova, of course, winner from race number two. I'll tell you what, it's an electric, lightning, quick, clean start here from the front five at the very least here. This leads to Marta Garcia, two tenths of a second. Wood then P3 as they come down towards the dipper here. Marty then is in P4. Pepper is in P5. And then Agron, Bell and Garcia are in P6 and 7. And the front seven have just got away here. Kim Alainen, 1.2 seconds then off the pace, but through this mountain section, drivers being as close as they are. I tell you what, that's a mistake from Vissa. She's gone in far too tight there. Marta Garcia though, will indeed have the run here down the Conrad straight, Billy. And I think we might see a change for the lead. Yeah, we saw Visser actually in the first race. She struggled quite a lot in the opening laps. She actually came under a lot of pressure from Caitlin Wood. And now, look, Garcia's up the inside here. I mean, it's going to be the outside for the next corner, but she looks like she's got the move done now on Visser. That's a great pass. She needs to defend the inside here. Don't let Visser up the inside. Great defensive positioning there on the entry to this corner. She's locked oh, up. Oh, big mistake! She's gone oh, off. she's gone! So Visser's tried to bite back there. Marta Garcia goes defensive. And well, Visser has done everything she needs to do. Just put a lot of pressure on there. And Marta Garcia now, well, she's P10. So not what she needed to see here. And Visser's been given an absolute gift to potentially go out and win this race. She's now 2.8 seconds clear of Wood. Marty then P3, Pepper P4, Agrid in P5. Every single one of those drivers are in a massive fight here. Look at this, it's like a car park then into turn number one as we're on board then with Marty who's been again gifted a P3 as it stands. But look at the train of cars behind. It's like a group of bumblebees. Look at this crazy stuff right now. But the big fact here is that Marta Garcia 
I don't believe we'll have had any damage from that. So she didn't hit any walls or anything. As we come up towards turn two, don't worry about that. Look at this. Almost contact then between these drivers. Marty now in P2, trying to defend from Pepper. Pepper trying to defend from Wood. These three going so, so close here. Almost a bit of a mistake there. This is the perfect opportunity now for Visser to drive away. Wood then trying to... Well, trying to get P3 again here as Pepper tries to advance as well. And this is the racing action we wanted to see at Bathurst. Well, this is wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff. I mean, there's literally about two temps between every every single driver there in the battle from second down to about eighth and ninth. So uh, this is wheel-to-wheel. -wheel. I can't see this lasting without there being any contact, though. I mean, round a circuit like this, the person at the back of this queue will be able to barely see anything. So it would be so easy to miss a breaking point or something like that. And what a shame that is for Marta Garcia to lock up there. I said her defensive positioning on the entry to the corner was very good, but we've seen her be very aggressive on the brakes before. She's always sort of one of the last of late breakers, and there it just it just seemed like she tried a bit, she got the move done, and she was just trying a bit too much in terms of being aggressive on the brakes and not trying to let this about pass, and that has cost her massively. Yeah, well, this has sort of almost faked the move, hasn't she? She's gone uh, right. I'm gonna. Make it look like I'm coming back at you. She tried to get to the slipstream as soon as possible uh, to then sort of almost pretend she's got more momentum going in towards uh, the chase there. And, well, it didn't work out. And Marta Garcia, she fell for it, hook, line, and sinker, and went off the circuit here. But look at this. Wood then trying to make a potential move on Pepper. Pepper trying to hold on to another podium. Two podiums today would be absolutely huge here. But Caitlin Wood showing excellent race pace today, which has been a little bit lacking over the course of the season, I would say. Again, qualifying pace has been exceptional. Uh, but race pace just not quite there. And Agron taking full advantage. It locks up. Oh, a bit of contact maybe between those two drivers. Agron is trying to just about hold on to P5 from Belen Garcia. Belen Garcia is now under pressure here from Sarah Moore. We've got Sida Kofa in P8 also closed right up here. And Kim Alainen, uh, just for good measure. And now all of a sudden we've got eight drivers here battling for what would be a podium spot. This is cracking stuff. And Billy, you're saying that there's going to definitely be contact here. We've got no evidence to back that theory up. They're going to be fine. I mean, there's a couple of close calls into that last corner. We saw some lock-ups. I think Agrin it was that locked up. Uh, but here at the minute, they're doing an amazing job to be this close to each other, wheel to wheel, inside, outside. And like, like I said, there's some small lock-ups. You can see, uh, I think that's Sid or Cover there just running a little bit wide on the exit. And I think she might come under a bit of pressure here from uh, actually Marta Garcia, who's got past Kim Line, and she's up to ninth now. Yeah, let's just pretend that Visser is no longer in this race, okay? So Marty leads, Pepper's in second, Woods in third, and it's so, so close between them all. Of course, we can't pretend that Visser's not in the race. She leads by 4.3 seconds as it stands, and as much as over the last few weeks here, Marta Garcia has been closing up that championship lead, and I thought that there might be a couple of fights, you know, for the, towards the end of the season, and potentially Marta Garcia might be close enough to, in the final round, maybe actually go for the title. But unfortunately, I think with the mistake that's happened here, uh, it's not quite going to work out. So Visser leads 4.3 seconds. Pepper then, uh, sorry, Marty in second spot, who's actually made a little bit of a gap then to Pepper, because Pepper's just been in all sorts of uh, bother with Wood behind, Agron behind as well. They've not given her a moment's peace there. A bit of a lockup uh, in front there. That was Bell and Garcia. And well, we're on board with Marta Garcia here, and she has now got to try and overtake Silicova. And this is the worst thing here. Like, it's not like she's coming through the usual mid pack. Like, Silicova has just won a race. She's flying around here, but Marta Garcia, she's got to try and make this move as early as possible. And there's no damage to the front of that car for Marta Garcia, so that's one positive to take here. Almost a bit of contact there. You can see Sinekova squeezing. Oh, and Sinekova gets caught out there. I don't think Marta Garcia is at fault there at all. I think Sinekova squeezed her. Maybe Marta could have backed out. I'm not too sure whether she got damaged from that. What's your take on that, Billy? Yeah, for me, she had a wheel alongside, so you've got to, at that point, and it's flat out through that kink. Marta Garcia, in that situation, she's not going to back out. Uh, that's not at all in her instincts, and rightly so. For me, that's a Siddle Cove mistake there. She's just been too aggressive with the defending there, and uh, that has cost her positions. And look at this battle going on ahead. I hope that Marta Garcia hasn't got front wing damage, because I would love to see her get stuck into this battle. She seems to have the red mist in her in her eyes at the minute. She's obviously very frustrated with making that mistake. She knows how costly that is, but we could see some great overtakes from her. And uh, Caitlin Wood here, I think she's dropping back just between behind these two in front. Look how aggressive they were on the brakes there, running side by side. And Sarah Moore's got a, a poor exit, but this is this is what we want to see. 
This is incredible stuff. This is what Bathurst, I was hoping, was going to be the case uh, from race one and race two, but it unfortunately hasn't really delivered the close, high-octane action that we are indeed uh, well used to now at this point of the eSports series. But right now we're getting it. This is the wish we wanted, and it's been granted, and now let's just soak it in and enjoy it. And we're on board then with Caitlin Wood. P6 as it stands then between Agron and Moore. There's around about four, four tenths of a second here. Bit of a mistake there by Agron, but there's no room to make an overtake here then. As we start the descent on the mountain here at Mount Panorama Bathurst. And uh, it's, again, it's just normal service resumed. You've kind of only really got one line through this part of the circuit here. A couple of lockups, though, which is going to be uh, music to the ears there for Caitlin Wood. She's going to be sensing that. And this is what you've got to do uh, around these te technical circuits. You've got to figure out who is struggling and who's not Billy and who you can attack. Yeah, I mean, you can just see there's, there seems to be like every corner. One of them's got the slight edge on the other. And we look at that. We're side by side. Now, this could be three wide here. Oh, my God. What is going on down this back straight? It seems that Caitlin Wood's got a great run. Agron behind him. Mars Garcia, look, she's involved in this. Now she's going for the same move. I don't know. She's, she's decided to back out of that move that obviously caused the contact with Silkova. And this, if this isn't contact, I don't know. I think this is just great racing, if not. Oh, man, this is unbelievable stuff. Caitlin Wood then, well, she momentarily got a great drive there through the entrance of Turn 1. Momentarily loses the position then to Moore. Moore moves up into P4. And Marta Garcia now trying to make it double whammy here. Down towards that final corner. And Marta Garcia does indeed make the move stick. And surely this is going to come to tears at some point. This is ridiculous stuff. Great racing here then for our third race here at Bathurst. Marta Garcia having it to go defensive. You're seeing indeed how strong the toe is around a circuit such as this. But again, you go through turn one and it's not over yet because now you've got the long run up towards turn number two. Vissa leads by 4.7 seconds. She's off. She's gallivanting off on her own here. Marty then in second by 4.7. Pepper now 5.2 behind P2 here. And well, next up then for uh, Marta Garcia is Sarah Moore, who's currently in P4. But look at this then. Wood up the inside of Agron. And oh dear, that is not going to work out there at all. And well, just skates off there. And again, it's it's one of those corners where it's cambered on the inside, but on the outside, it's completely flat. And if you just get one wheel up there, you're a passenger. Yeah, she just looked like to me... She was just too late on the break. She was mirror watching a bit. She had a big train of cars behind her, granted. So she was under a lot of pressure in that braking zone. And it just looked like she just got a bit greedy on the brakes. Maybe Marta Garcia sort of obviously in front of her. She It looked like she kind of braked too late, knew it she had. But also at the same time, didn't want to take Marta Garcia out. And it, she was arrowing towards her and obviously avoided that contact. Emma Kimmelin in there. We've seen her make that mistake in race two, running she wide there. She loves that curb. Yeah, she really uh, it seems to be struggling with a bit of understeer. She always seems to run wide on the exit there, but she's kept it all composed. She's kept it on the track. And in this situation, when you've got that many cars battling in front of you, you need to keep it on circuit. Look, we're seeing another lock up here. Who was that on the outside there? Uh, I think that's Belen Garcia. She's lapped down. Uh, oh, okay, we got a lap car. Yeah, so she's lapped down. She's just trying to get out of the way here. Look at the cars in front, though. It is just action, action, action. Then here we go. It is Marta Garcia versus Sarah Moore. We saw Marta Garcia make a move on the inside of this corner before. And now she's going to have to go the long way around here. And she will have the inside line, though, through the next left-hander. And, well, is she going to get it done here? Got to hit your breaking point, though, Marta. You don't want to be running off into that gravel again. And, well, the move is well and truly done there. And let's talk now about the standings here, Billy. You know, with Vissa winning this race, regardless of what happens with Marta Garcia, she's going to extend extend the championship lead but right now Marta has to finish second right she has to finish second yeah I mean she needs to get as many points as possible she needs the fastest lap for sure uh I don't think well we've got nine minutes on her on the clock so she is very lucky that this is the longest race of the the weekend here she has time on her hands but the two in front of her Marty and Pepper they're quick drivers 4.2 seconds to Pepper that's a huge margin to try and narrow it down so I'd be impressed if she managed to catch that back up, but we've seen her come back from uh, bigger gaps before. Yeah, it'd be interested to see what this is up to right now, because she's dropped about a second and a half. Whether that's because she's come through a pack or whether she may have just tagged the wall somewhere. Uh, it might be worth to seeing whether she may have some front wing damage. No, nope, looks like she's all good there. So I'm going to say that that was more to do with coming through lapped traffic. But again, she needs to do what Marta did in the first race, just manage that gap, just make sure you do indeed cross the line here. So regardless where Marta finishes right now, she is going to, to extend the championship lead. Uh, you know, it could be as little as three points, but three points is better than zero. That is for sure. Um, and Garcia, of course, was leading this race. Now 3.8 seconds between Pepper and Garcia in P3 and P4. But I tell you what, the battle behind all of this is still happening. Agron and Bell and Garcia are going at it toe for toe right now. Uh, again, Agron's not going to be able to make a move here, that's for sure. Um, but 
as we come down then through the dipper. There we go. Uh, you can see a little bit of a mistake there again. You, you get one corner wrong here, Billy, and you're compromised for the next four or five. Yeah, this is a real tough sequence. It's left, right, left, right, going downhill, off camber, cambered corners. I mean, there's so much opportunity to lock a front. We've seen, we even see on the best line through that last left-hander before this back straight here that people in general lock up most laps, and that's because it's downhill, it's cambered, and to be honest, you always seem to snatch the inside front there, but the quick line is to carry the speed through it. You've just got to make sure you don't lock up enough that you run wide and, and hit those walls on the exit. Agron here, she's doing well to hang with uh, Bell and Garcia here, and obviously you've got Sarah Moore ahead of them, so this could be another three-way battle for position. Uh, this battle is far from over. We've got seven minutes left for this race, plenty of time to see some more change for position here. Yeah, I think Agron's the quickest out of these three, if I'm honest. Like, I think she showed that over the top of the mountain, but I think what's got um, indeed Bell and Garcia out of jail there is the toe from Moore in front. But look at this, already Marta Garcia has managed to gain a three-second advantage um, over more on that previous lap so that's huge and one lap there uh, we've set a, a car off the circuit i'm assuming that's a back marker i think that might be uh abby eaton uh unfortunately there I was, uh, yeah i thought it might be one of the front runners making a big error but it isn't uh but again it's 4.3 seconds there. so yeah definitely Vissa was coming through the pack i think in terms of back markers and that's why she lost a bit of time she's now back up to normal pace um but yeah marta garcia like we said i think she has to finish second in this race but if there's two people you don't want in front of you to have to make an overtake it be pepper and marty those two have been very very quick of course both race winners as well um so yeah it's not ideal yeah uh, for me she's not going to finish in second position in this race no matter how quick she is with only six minutes it's, it's a two minute lap she'd have to take multiple seconds out of marty and i just don't think that there's the pace gap there at the minute to achieve that she has however taken a second on that last lap out of pepper so saying that with about about a three second gap she may be on for the podium um over pepper here but I can't see it being a P2, and I can just, in general, this tonight's uh, racing has it's gone the way of Vissa. She's been consistent. She did well in race two. Uh, even in the first race where she came second, she again had the fastest lap. She just seems to pick up the points on a consistent basis. We haven't actually seen many mistakes at all from Marta Garcia in the last three rounds. She's been mistake-free, really, which is what has closed this gap up and made it interesting. But uh, tonight, when it counted, she made that crucial error. Um, and it wasn't sort of an error that cost her one position. It cost her nine. It's uh, a big error. Yeah, huge error. Well, we're talking about, you know, it, it's going to be very unlikely she gets P2, but the difference between real racing and sim racing is they will have the relative right in front of them on their screen. You don't have the relative in your helmet on you know when you're racing in a real race car so seeing the gap coming down whether they got crew chief as well working uh, they'll be being told what the gap is of course you guys uh, in the real racing world you get told by your crew um chief yourself but you can also tell them to shut up we've seen that very uh, happen many a time so pepper will have now the pressure not only of racing at bathurst which you're racing against the track on its own anyway let alone anyone else on track but then you're seeing someone taking out half a second every sector that's going to add even more pressure on but it doesn't matter right now because uh, Marta Garcia hasn't really closed the gap. But look at this then. P6, P5, uh, sorry, P6, P7, and P8 are so, so close here still. And, well, any one of these three drivers could indeed take a P6, I would say, uh, at this point of the race. Ben Garcia leads this little group, then Agron, and then Kim Alainen just in behind. And Kim Alainen, she had a very good start to this season. Of course, she got the race two victory in round one and two. Just fallen off the pace ever since then. This is an opportunity for a little bit of redemption. I'll say again, it's not quite a race victory, but she'll want to try and showcase, you know what? I'm still here. I'm still capable of big performances. And well, no bigger opportunity than here at Bathurst to try and get these two overtakes. Yeah, and I think what we've seen through the, this league so far is that hard work and the hours you put into sim racing is the same in real life. The, the hard work pays off. And I think some of the drivers, obviously, with other commitments and stuff like that, we've seen some drivers make huge progress over the rounds, like Marta Garcia. The last three, four rounds, she's been sort of really in the league of her own. Um, but the first few rounds, she was struggling to be consistent on the podium. So for me, she's been very, she's been a really improved driver. But you've seen the likes of Kimi Lainen, who was getting great results at the start, kind of not continue that progress in the same way. Um, so there's definitely been, obviously, like I say, time restraints and other commitments that have have changed the sort of the way that the drivers sit in the standings um obviously we've had some drivers drop out as well like alice powell she's been away for the last few rounds and she was consistently in the top five and now she's outside the top 10 and she hasn't really had a good three races tonight so um yeah that's uh 
it's just down to time and the commitment you put into this sort of uh, series. For sure, absolutely for sure. You can see there that uh, Belen Garcia nearly made a move there on Moore. Uh, Moore closed the door as quickly as it opened, though. Uh, and as it stands now, it looks like Moore may have made a mistake here. Because now Belen Garcia, Agrin and Kimmelainen and make it a four-way battle then for position. Moore then just gets a bit of a, 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 a well, really good exit out of the final corner, to be fair. And now these three drivers just in behind. So Belen Garcia leads this little, it's like a Tour de France peloton right now, trying to catch up here uh, for that top five. Again, if you can't get a race win or a podium, the top five is the next thing you're looking for. And uh, while, while these two are battling, it does give Moore an opportunity just to drive away. And Moore just looks like she has more pace, uh, ironically, uh, even though she, she definitely made a mistake. She wasn't in this battle last lap, so I think she's made a, a genuine mistake somewhere, and now she's able to drive away again. So it looks like there's no damage to the car. But again, it's normal service resume then. It's Agron, Belen Garcia, and Kimmelainen all trying to chase down Sarah Moore. One minute, 56 seconds on the clock. So I think we're going to have one and a half laps remaining of this race. This leads 4.6 seconds again. She did look like she was losing time through the mid part of this race, but that must have been down to back markers, that's for sure. But this is the battle right now then. Marta Garcia, I think she needs to finish at least second in this race to really uh, have any chance moving into rounds number nine and rounds number 10. But can she just get that one more position and maybe enough pressure then with, you know, Neri and Marty might just see uh, indeed that Marta Garcia is behind her and then make a mistake because uh, is she going to be more frightened of Marta Garcia or Pepper? To be fair, both of them have been, for me, the most two, the two most improved drivers over the course of this eSports League. Um, but I think she's going to be a little bit more frightened if Gar Garcia is behind her than Pepper. Uh, so Garcia now has to just put the pressure on. That's all she can do right now. She can make this overtake for P3, but it's all about piling just time pressure at the end of the day. It will be five and a half seconds if she does get the overtake on Pepper. But again, it's no easy task here trying to make an overtake here on Tasman. No, not at all. And I think we're looking at the gap now between them. I, unless she gets this done before the last lap, I think for me this battle is going to continue over the last lap between the two. I don't think, I just generally don't think you can see how far ahead the cars are in the distance. Uh, that sort of five, six second gap. Oh, Marta Garcia's going around the outside. There's contact. Oh, she's got tagged there. Yeah, I think Marta Garcia turned in far too early. And I think she's got the same mindset as me here. I think she knows she has to finish in P2. She had to get the job done as soon as possible. Um, she's moved down to P4. So hold on, what's happened behind then? So what's happened behind here? So Pepper then is holding on to P2, but... So Marta Garcia, what's happened with the Bellin, Garcia, Kimmelainen and, and Moore battle? I wonder if there might be contact between the drivers because they were not that far behind and Marta hasn't lost a position. So I guess she knew that she could try and take that on. If it didn't work out, it didn't work out. But for me, she's turning a little bit too early there. Pepper helped her line and Pepper. It's going to take another podium here if it stays as it is. But this leads 5.4 seconds. Marty in second and Pepper is in third. And this is a huge leap for Visser to take away the W Series Esports League Season 1 with two rounds to go. Yeah, she's had a, a great weekend, a great sort of three races here tonight. That's been consistent. She does well in race two, which is where points are really gained for me. I think normally when we've seen big inroads in the championship, it's been from a, either a mistake from one of the front runners, which we saw obviously last time at Suzuka, Visser made a mistake. She had a, a poor result, and that's where I was able to um, Marta Garcia to take 17 points out of the lead in the championship, which is what she needs to carry that momentum in the last three rounds. That's what she needed, but she's actually going to lose points. And uh, for me, unless there's any huge dramas over the last few rounds, I think this and now, that's the, the eSports League wrapped up for her, I think, per, in my personal opinion. I think Marta Garcia, I'm seeing too many mistakes from her, like, that's not something that's been in her, involved in her driving over the last few rounds. She's been very composed and she's made great moves stick. But sort of that turning into early into Pepper, that's something we'd have seen from her early on in the league. And it, I think she knows that this um, this race here is um, crucial in swinging uh, the momentum in the league. Yeah, it's just pressure though. It doesn't matter what level, whether it be sim racing, real world motorsport, you know, whether it be in karts or Formula One, you know, it doesn't really matter. Pressure is. Uh, a very strange mistress. It could completely change the way you perform in any, well, whether it be my motorsport, it could be football, it could be anything, it could be your job, it could be absolutely anything. Uh, indeed, just change the way you look at things. Uh, Bicycle Visser, by the way, is looking likely she's going to take the victory here. Uh, 6.2 seconds in the lead. We're on board with Sidokova, um, who is currently in P7. But, well, it's been another dominant display then by Visser, who is indeed crossing the line. And she will take victory here in race number three. A sensational performance then from Fights Kavissa. Um, but race number three, we've been talking about, you know, maybe Marta Garcia can put the pressure on, potentially close that championship gap.
Don't think it's going to happen, Billy. It has been a very, very good display here by Vista. She did indeed lose the lead to Marta earlier in the race. She just piled that pressure on straight back and she made Marta make a mistake and that was pretty much race over. So three different races tonight and three different winners as well. Vissa, Garcia and Sidorkova all getting a win. But what it means for Baitska Vissa though is that she has extended her lead at the top of the standings by 57 points with that win in the final race and some good performances before that. Marta Garcia won race one tonight, but a couple of costly mistakes after that uh, means that she has got that 57 point deficit to Vissa. Arena Sidorkova won the reverse grid race, race two of the night. It's been a good night for Norea Marty, who moves up to fourth. Pepper in fifth. Caitlin Wood, our local girl to Bathurst, is now in sixth. Agrin Garcia Moore in eight, seven, eighth, ninth. And Alice Powell rounds out the top 10.